In this video, we're going to learn to use Excel to insert stock charts. Now, stock charts are a very specific chart that's used to visually display information about the opening, closing, volume, high and low prices for the day of a particular traded item. Traded items would include stocks, it would include commodities, and it would also include cryptocurrencies. If we go to our insert ribbon, and from our insert ribbon under our waterfall charts, you will find your stock charts. And Excel has four stock charts available to work with. We've got a high, low close, an open high, low close. We have the volume high, low close. And then we have the volume open high, low close charts. Now, if we select our data, and from our insert ribbon, if we go to insert and we try and insert a high low close chart, it's not going to work. And if we, we get no preview either, we actually only get a preview if we go over to the last chart. Now, let me explain the reason to this for you. Let me select this high low close and we get this error saying to create this chart, you need to arrange the data on your sheet in this order high, low, and close. And it's identified that we have more columns than we needed, so most likely we don't have the data that we need, so it can't produce this particular chart. So what we need to do is always make sure that the data that we need for the series of these stock charts are in the correct order. The correct order to have them laid out in is going to be your time period, in this case it's date, the volume, the open, the high, the low, and the close price. Now this sample data that I have here is the prices, the dollar prices for Bitcoin in May, for the first two weeks almost of May 2020. So let's select all of our data again. And if we go to insert and from insert, we can insert our stock chart. And we see that it doesn't work. So what we have to do is select the correct columns that we need. So we need the high, the low, and the close. So I'm just going to select our high, low, and close values. And we also need to select our time period, which I had mentioned is our date. To multi-select columns like this when we already have a column selected, the nifty trick would be to press control, it would be to hold down the left mouse, and then you can select the additional data that you want. Now we can go to insert and we can insert our stock chart. Now this is our high, low and close chart, our HLC chart. And we can see these little bars and each bar represents one time period. It shows the high point, it shows the low point and it shows the close. On the axis we have the date and we have the values. And then we also have a chart title that comes in just saying chart title. We can do some formatting then on this chart to make it a little bit more easy pleasing on the eye or easier to read. One thing I've noticed about this chart is the data series for the close point isn't very legible. So I have selected that data point and I'm gonna select format data series. Now I am then going to select under the fill options marker and marker options. And I'm going to change the marker option to a different marker and I'm going to increase the size of it. And I am also going to change the actual color of the marker. I'm going to change it to a dark color. So that way it is really, really easy to see. Now the entire markers themselves as well, I'm also going to change the color of these to black and I'm going to increase the width on these and I've just increased the width way too much. I'm going to increase the width on these as well just so they are that much more visible on our charts. So let's have a look at how that looks now. So now we can quite easily identify our close point, our high point and our low point. 
Now some other formatting that we can do to this chart is our title. And this is our Bitcoin high, low, close chart. We can also then do some formatting on our axis. So we know this is a currency, so we can change the values of this to actually show that it is a currency. So under our axis option, we can check our axis options and change this from number to our currency. We can then select the currency that we want and this is our US dollars. So I'm selecting US dollars and I want no decimal places. And that will reformat that axis for us. So it's just a little bit tidier. Now down the bottom as well, I am going to change the axis. So we have our date selected, but I'm going to change the type. And I'm going to change it so it doesn't show um, the date the whole year, but just the end of the year. So that, again, just makes it a little bit easier to read on the chart. Now I'm going to select the entire chart and I'm going to fill the chart in a light grey colour. And I'm going to increase the transparency a little bit on that chart. So now we have done some formatting. I'm also actually going to get rid of the legend at the bottom because it just says high and low and doesn't really give you any information about it. Now it does show you the symbol for close, but really it doesn't make sense to have that in there. So I can just remove that as well. Now we can see our HLC chart for the price of Bitcoin is an awful lot easier for us to read. So that is the first of the stock charts. Now I'm gonna take this chart and just move it out of the way. And we're gonna start working on our next chart now. Now our second chart is our opening high, low, close chart. So we need again to make sure we select the data in the correct order. So I've selected open, high, low, close and it's presented in the order that it needs to be in. From our insert ribbon, I can then insert our open, high, low, close chart. And again, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to change the chart title and the chart title is going to be Bitcoin open, high, low, close. So we know exactly what the chart is. So how do we read this chart for those of you that aren't familiar with stock charts? This is an extremely common stock chart and it is very much like a box and whisker plot. So we have a number of data series for each box. The whiskers will show the high point and if there's a bottom, it'll show the low point. We also then have the opening and the closing value. Now we have two different types of bars. We've got up bars and we have down bars. So a down bar is a bar where the closing value is below the opening value. And the default for these are to be returned, filled in in this black. Whereas an up bar will, be, will have a closing price that is higher than the actual opening price. And these look in this white color, as we can see on this chart. Now we can format these data series different, the up bars and the down bars. So they look a little bit different to each other. So if we select the up bars, we can see that only the up bars have been selected. We can then change the fill of these up bars to something more appropriate to our own personal style and our own personal needs. I'm also then going to select the down bars and I'm gonna change the color of the down bars to red. Now the green I selected is quite a mild green so I'm going to increase the transparency on the red just to reduce the strength of the color and also to be able to see the bar. Now to see the bar on the green ones, I'm also going to increase the transparency slightly. Now some other formatting options that we can include. We can go down to the bottom again and we can also remove the legend because it doesn't make much sense. 
I am going to fill the entire chart and I'm going to go to a solid fill. And in this solid fill, I'm going to pick a kind of gray color again. Now, like last time, we can change the axis and we can change the number value in this case to our currency. So we can select currency, we can select zero decimal places, we can select the symbol for US dollars. And then the bottom, we can also change our dates because it, the dates just seem to be taking up quite a lot of space. So we can reduce the space that the dates are taking up by changing how the dates are actually showing. Now, we can also change the units so that instead of showing one, it can show only every second day. And we can see now that this axis down the bottom is much easier to read. I'm going to make that bold and I am also going to change the currencies to bold and you'll notice this time just for quick and ease I am using the the fonts from the home ribbon and I've quickly updated this as well. Now another thing I'm going to quickly show you is that you can add trend lines. So trend lines would be very common in stock charts and when you're adding trend, line, trend lines, it can only be based on one of the series. Now in this case, we have selected the low. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say add trend line. So now we have our format trend line options available. And what we're gonna select is a moving average trend line over two periods, which I think is quite fine. And then I'm going to change the color of this as well. So it just stands out a little bit more on the chart, has that little bit more of a punch there on the chart so you can see it. And I am going to increase the width of the, the dashes as well in our trend line. So that is our trend line now inserted to our chart. And I think now we can say that our, H uh, our OHLC chart is looking quite good and it seems easy enough to read. So what we'll do now is move on to the third chart of the stock charts. So I'm gonna take this chart. I'm just going to move it over here out of the way. And now we are going to move on to our high, low close, and we are gonna take our date and volume columns as well. Insert chart, and from our insert chart, we are going to take our third stock chart. Now this chart also could do with a little formatting, but let me explain how you read this chart. We have got dual axis, so we've got two axis. We have an axis that shows the volume and we have an axis that shows the price. And then down the bottom, we also have the dates. The volume is shown by this blue column where then you can just about see the high, low and close points within the bars here as well. So we're gonna do a little bit of chart formatting here. So first we will remove our legend down the bottom. We'll go over here to our volume. And from our text options, what we're gonna do is display these units. And we're gonna change how these units are displayed to billions. So now these values are taking up way less space on your actual chart. And your eye isn't distracted looking at these values. It can kind of focus in on the chart. I am then going to go over to our dollar values as well. And I'm going to change the number format of these to dollars. I'm going to make it zero decimal places. We are going to go to our dollar value. So we're gonna look for currency and we're going to change this then to US dollars. So now we have no decimal places and we have put in the dollar sign as well. Down the bottom here, I am going to take our dates and we are going to change it to every second day. So we remove some of the, va the values in here. And I'm also going to go down to our number format. 
and change the format of our date as well just so it takes up that little bit less space on our chart that way our eyes focus in on the chart and not all of the actual detail around the chart and we can format up some more so we will pick our entire chart I am going to give this a solid fill and you know the routine for me with this one. We could also then add our axis titles because there is so many axes on this sheet that adding an axis title will make the chart easier for your users to actually read. So we can put in the equal sign and we can just select the values from our data table. So our axis title along the bottom, the equal sign must go in the formula bar. And our axis over here is going to be, well, it's just, it basically it's just dollars because it is the dollar value of Bitcoin. So then we would need our chart title. So it is Bitcoin. And this chart is our volume, high, low, close chart. So what other formatting could we now do to improve the readability of this chart? Now often when you're creating charts, formatting less is more. But in some cases it just requires that little bit extra tweaking on the behalf of the creator when making the chart. So I'm going to go to the series option on the for the volume and I'm going to I'm going to decrease the gap width between each of these items. I am then going to go to the fill options and I am going to say solid fill. I'm going to select a color and I am going to increase then the transparency of the bars in that chart. So we can see there that this chart still needs some work because the opening, closing, opening, high, low, closing isn't very readable either. So again, we can increase the size of the lines in here. We can then select the close series and we can change the marker. So go to our marker options and I'm going to change this to a diamond. And I'm also going to change the color to a dark blue. Now they have a yellow outline, so we could change the yellow outline. But now that chart is a lot more readable than it was when we started. We have now created three stock charts from all of the stock of the four stock charts. So the final chart is the volume open high low close chart. Now I'm not going to create that chart for you because you've seen how to create these three charts and to be honest with you, it is very much the same as creating these charts except for you have an additional data point. You have over and above this one, you have the opening. So what you're gonna find is these bar charts, but with these, move this chart back over, with these kind of candlesticks included in them instead, the box and whisker kind of charts included instead. So what I want you to try and do now is replicate this chart that I'm showing you now using some of the formatting tips and using the stuff that we've discussed in this video. If you hop over to the website now, you will be able to download a copy of this data of table so that you can carry out this activity and so that you can practice along with the other examples that we work through in this video. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye now.